Hi, John. Welcome uh, to DC. Um, can you just kind of take us through the process? How did it come about that ultimately uh, the Nationals were the right fit for you? Um, well, it was kind of a kind of a weird process. Um, obviously, a little bit different than the first time going through free agency. Uh, and, and you know, going into it, I knew it was going to be a little bit slower and and whatnot. But um, I just didn't think it would take till till the almost the end of January for something to kind of come up. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm glad that, that, uh, you know, that we're here and, and we're going to be a part of this, this organization and uh, looking forward to it. But yeah, just to, obviously a little bit different with all the, all the things going on in the world. And, um, but it, 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 uh, it worked out for, uh, for the, for the best. So we're excited. You've been a part of some rotations, had some big names in it before. Um, most of those times you were maybe the anchor or one of the lead anchors, you know, the guy who would start game one, game seven of, of a world series. Now you're joining a rotation with Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin already here. What's that dynamic like when you're part of a, a larger group like that? And maybe you're not necessarily being counted on to be the anchor, the guy that leads the way. I'll tell you what, it's going to be nice to just kind of sit back and, and watch these guys work. I mean, obviously I've seen them from afar and uh, got to compete against them for a long time. And I'm excited to work with them. It's always nice when you go to another team and you get to see how guys work. You know, I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, get to see how they prepare for each, each start. Um, you know, obviously I've gotten to, to know Shures a little bit over the years. Um, I don't really know Straws and, and, and Patrick that, that well yet. I uh, look forward to that, but I, I'm just excited to, to, you know, kind of dig into their minds and see how they prepare and, and really just stay out of the way. You know, I, I want to be, uh, kind of a fly on the wall with this rotation and just try to help out as best I can. We'll go to Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Hey, John, thanks for doing this. Uh, I, I know yeah. one thing the Nationals are really prioritizing with this with, when looking for a starter was durability, a guy who goes out every fifth day. And I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred different times in the recent years, but what's kind of biggest reason why you've been able to stay so durable uh, year in and year out and also just across seasons while you're in them? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think I would like to attribute it to, to my work ethic. I'd like to attribute it to the, the, the work I put in the weight room and, and the arm care that I do during the off season and, and in season. Um, I think a lot of it is luck. I just, for whatever reason, have been lucky to, to stay healthy and, and, you know, the little things that, that pop up during the season, we've been able to minimize them, which, you know, always helps anytime those little things pop up and you don't take care of them, they can turn into some big things later on. So, I feel like we stayed on top of that, which is, which has really, really helped me, um, you know, but that's really it. I, I think, I think a lot of it, man, I think a lot of it's just luck. I, I've just had really good luck with, with some things that have found, you know, kind of popped up through the years that uh, really turned out to be nothing and stuff that you could pitch through and, and kind of minimize as you went through. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, part of it is, is the, is the work in the weight room and part of it is, is a little bit of luck. And then with coming off a short year and then going into a year that kind of is a moving target, even with the start date, what's, what's your winter been like? I guess, what are you doing like right now or ramp up wise? I guess what's that been like for you? Um, for the most part, it's been a pretty normal winter. Um, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm throwing, I'm actually, I've actually thrown a few more pens than I have in the past, you know, to this point, usually I kind of wait to the first week uh, or the week before spring training to, to get on the mound. But, there were some things that popped up last year that, that I needed to work on and needed to fix. And, and uh, so I got on there a little bit sooner. So I, I'm excited about that. I feel like I'm in a good place physically on the mound and, you know, just a normal off season as far as the workouts and, and getting ready for, you know, hopefully a, a, a start date that's here, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Thanks, man. Yeah. Gordon Wittenmeyer, Chicago, NBC Chicago. Hey, John, um, congrats on, on the signing, man. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, you and the Cubs entering this whole process this this winter uh, had dis had discussed sort of mutual interest in possibly reconnecting. Um, I've been told that you did reach out to them at one point uh, before the Nats process got got too far down the road and and talked about getting something done early, maybe even, uh, you know, not, not nothing that was going to break the bank or anything and that you might have even talked to Tom personally can you give us some sense of uh, how that process went and, and what you were told by them? Uh, you really probably all the stuff that you've heard. Um, 
you know, it, it, like I said early on, uh, the process was a lot slower than, than, um, that I, I shouldn't say expected. I mean, I kind of expected it to be slow, not only with the pandemic and, uh, you know, people trying to figure out their financial status and what they're going to go into next season with, but also just knowing, you know, I'm not the 2014, 15 free agent that I, that I was, you know, I, I understand my role and I understood where I was going to kind of fall in those dominoes as far as what teams want and, and need. Um, you know, and we did, we did reach out and so did they, and we talked and we had a lot of good conversations. Um, you know, just kind of the timeline, I think on either side didn't really work out and, you know, everything that they've done for me. And, and, you know, I had, a, I had a great conversation with Tom, I had really good conversations with Jed and talked to Rossi and, um, you know, a couple of the teammates of, of my teammates and, you know, just, this was uh, felt like a good fit for us. And, and I had to make a decision um, and, and we did. And uh, I think both sides, you know, we, we went through the process and, and this is where we ended up. Did, did they ever actually get to a point where there was an offer involved or, or were they not even able to go that far with you? No, they did uh, kind of down right at the, at the nitty gritty. They, they did make an offer. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into detail about that. And uh, you know, it's kind of private conversations that we had and, and I'm sure, you know, you guys have probably heard a lot of what's gone on behind the scenes, probably more than I know, but um you know, it just, uh, like I said, we needed to make a decision and uh, we felt like this was the, the best decision for us. Hey, hey, just real quick, was, was there disappointment in that, you know, that whatever level that might be? Well, I mean, I think anytime, you know, you fully invest into an organization, it doesn't work out and, and on, on either side. You know, there's, there's some disappointment. Um, but that being said, I, I think that also adds to the excitement to, you know, kind of this new chapter for us. And, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hannah Kaiser, Yahoo Sports. Hey, John, this is actually following up on the durability question. Last year did not pitch as many innings as you had thrown in, I think like 10 years. And so I'm just sort of curious when you're, when you're talking about what your off season looks like and even just sort of ramping up from here on out, are you doing anything differently coming off of such a short season? Do you have any concerns about what that short season might have done to your durability going forward? Just, just sort of talk about that. Uh, I don't think it does. I think, you know, once you kind of pitch a big league season, you kind of know what it is. And I think your body knows what it is. Um, I don't, you know, this year, I, I, every year has changed for me as far as what I'm, what I'm doing to try to stay durable and try to pitch as many starts as I can. Uh, just because you get older, things change. You can't do the things you, you once did when you're 23, 24. So that always changes. Um, but I, I think going into next season, I think the guys that have done this for a long time, kind of their bodies know, know what knows what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think there's going to be – I hope there's no, you know, kind of holdbacks. You know, I think we're all old enough to where we're, we're past the inning, inning limitations and stuff like that. So – I'm sure, you know, Davey and, and those guys will do a good job of early on maybe getting us ramped up and getting us ready. But I think once we kind of get our feet under us, you know, kind of let us go and and see where where we can take us. And you mentioned that you were throwing off the mound a little sooner to work on something in particular. Can you tell us a little about what that is? Uh, just a lot of flexibility stuff. I know that kind of sounds weird, you know, doing it off the mound, but uh, just some stuff I had some limitations with last year, just with a little turn and, and things I was working on. So, you know, we've been kind of implementing some, some strengthening exercises along with mound work to try to get me kind of in the, in these positions I need to be in at this point in my career. So just stuff like that, it really is kind of minimal things, but at the end, kind of end result, when you release the ball, it becomes a big thing if you're not, not in those good positions. And then just, you went through last year, it, it was a short season, but I imagine mentally it felt like a grind. I'm curious in your whole long career, sort of how you compare the the mental toll of that weird season and under the, the precautions and everything. What was that like sort of mentally for someone who's got a lot of big league experience? Um, I would kind of compare it to like an extended version of the playoffs. You know, I feel like that, that mental toll that once you start the playoffs and you go from day one of the playoffs to, to game seven or whatever of the world series, mentally, you don't realize how draining it is until you're done. And I think 
last year was that, you know, it was, it was two months of just kind of that mental grind of, you know, the testing, worrying about the testing, you know, making sure you're doing all the right things um, and then having to play games. And then you got no fans. So you got to try to amp yourself up and, you know, all these kind of outside things that you're not really used to dealing with. Uh, and, and, and then when it was all said and done, you kind of look back and go, God, that, that was the longest 60 games I think I've ever been a part of. So I think I kind of compare it to that, just just more or less kind of an extended playoff kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. Jessica Camerato, Nationals.com. Hey, John, how much did your relationship uh, from Chicago with Davey factor into this? And what is it going to be like having a reunion with what seems like a ton of your teammates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, and, and I think that's what kind of helped the fit. You know, I, I think that's what helped the decision process maybe go a little bit smoother is having those guys. Um, you know, you got you got Bogey over there. I got Greg Barajas, one of the trainers, uh, Paul Lassard, obviously uh, uh, Davey and, and Jim Hickey. And then having Schwarbs uh, is, is a big help. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I talked to Davey, you know, once Schwarbs kind of got over there, I, I, you know, I put a I put a little a little note to him saying, hey, man, you know, love to still be your teammate. And, you know, just kind of kidding around type deal. But, um, you know, talking to those guys, once this became a thing, you know, I reached out to, to some of the guys and just wanted to, to talk to them. I reached out to some of the guys that, you know, that I know that played there in the past and, and wanted to get their, their feedback. And, but yeah, I mean, obviously when you know people, it makes coming into a whole new environment a lot easier. Um, you know, not only players, but you know, the management, you know, I, I know these guys and, and they know me, so they know what to expect of me and I know what to expect of them. So that makes that whole kind of guessing thing early on a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I mean, that definitely helped the process, the communication you know, it was a huge part of it. Also, you have basically accomplished, it seems like everything that anybody would want to accomplish in their career already. So what do you still want to accomplish this season? Uh, win. I mean, I think that's never wavered for me. I, I, you know, from, from day one, uh, even in the minor leagues till I signed with the Cubs to, to now being here with, with the Nationals, uh, I want to win. I, I, I still have the drive to win. Um, you know, I want to bring another ring, ring to D.C., and, and hopefully we can do that. Uh, but it just seemed like a great group of guys. I mean, playing against these guys for the past couple of years, just how much fun they have across the way. Uh, I know Davey brings an element to that. Um, you know, it's definitely a place that you sit across the dugout and look at and go, wow, that'd be pretty cool to be a part of. And I I'm excited for that. Scott Abraham, ABC7 here in D.C. Hey, John, welcome to Washington. A little bit what Thank you. Jeff said. You talk about drive and that fire and that motivation. Where does that come from? Obviously, you accomplished so much in baseball. Where does that motivation and hunger still come from? I just hate to lose. <laughs> I mean, uh, plain and simple, I hate I hate getting beat. Um, I love the competition side of things. Uh, and really, anything I do, it, it's, you know, it turns competitive. Um I want to be good at what I do. So that, that's what drives me. Um, and now having these guys in the rotation, I think will drive me even more, uh, you know, watching these guys for a while and seeing how good they've been in the, in their big league careers. I'm just excited to be a part of it, uh, part of this rotation. Um, but like I said, I, I just, I hate losing. I hate, I hate that whole feeling, um, you know, especially as a pitcher, you, you only get to do it every five days. So, that that day is just that much important to me. And, and when, when you lose, it feels like you kind of let your whole team down. So hopefully, uh, hopefully there's a lot more winning than losing going on and, and we can continue to have success over here. And from the outside looking in, what specifically excites you about joining the Washington Nationals? Ah, man, I think just kind of the youth. I mean, there's a lot of youth here. Um, obviously you got one of the best players in baseball in your outfield. Um, and I'm like, for me personally, it's the staff. Like I'm excited to be, to be with these guys and see and kind of pick their brains um, and, and see what makes them successful and what drives them. Uh, Cause that, that's part of what drives me is seeing what those guys do and, and learning something from these guys. So I'm excited about that. I know Davey obviously brings so much fun to the table. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about having fun and just playing baseball and, and uh, hopefully we want to win a lot of ball games. Andy Costco, Washington Times. 
Hey, John, uh, thanks for the time. Uh, just looking mm -hmm. back at 15 seasons, I mean, from, the, from when you started to now entering your 16th, I mean, where have you changed your game to kind of stay ahead of the curve, I guess, of, of batters? I mean, how have you developed, I guess, your, your, your pitching? Oh, man, that's a that's a long question uh, or a long answer, I should say. Uh, you know, I think it all started with with having Veritech. You know, I think if you if you come up as a young guy with maybe a younger catcher, you don't you don't get pushed in areas that you might should. And he caught such a veteran staff for so long that when I got called up, he expected me to be these guys. And I think that's what drove me to, to every day try to get better at something, whether it be command of a certain side of the plate or a pitch or whatnot. And then as you get older, you know, things kind of slow down, you know, you, your velocity slows down. So, you know, you, you start relying on other pitches that you might not have at an earlier age, you know, earlier day, earlier age, I never really threw my changeup. And now my changeup has become uh, more of a weapon that I use uh, more frequently. So you just have to learn to evolve. I mean, you have to learn how to get out. And I think as you get older, you try to, as it gets harder, as you get older, you try to make getting out easier if you can, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, it, it's just an evolving thing and something that every day I'm learning, you know, last year I, I learned a lot about what I could pitch with and what I couldn't pitch with and how I need to adjust as far as my game, my game plan and attack plan even though it was just such a short season. But, you know, that's something that is another thing I want to talk to these guys about and see how they adjust. You know, they, these guys still have a lot of great stuff and a lot of good innings in them. And uh, I'm just excited to see that and maybe learn something from them that can maybe apply to me getting those outs a little bit easier, even though I don't have quite the stuff I used to. Patrick Mooney of The Athletic Chicago. Hey, John, just to follow up on – Gordon's questions. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of probably mixed emotions. You had a lot of time to process this decision. How do you look back on your uh, six years in Chicago and your place uh, in history there? Oh, man. Um, you know, I think I've, I, I summed it up, I think, on maybe that last that last interview or my last start in Wrigley. Uh, you know, just I, I really didn't think six years would go by that fast. Um, you know, it felt like – yesterday we, we were doing the whole this whole thing but just with the Cubs you know so uh it's crazy um I, I'm glad we got to accomplish a lot of things there I'm glad I got to play with a lot of the guys that I did you know uh, be a part of their careers and they got to be a part of mine which is really really special I've, I've developed a lot of great relationships over there in that organization um you know guys that I felt like I needed to call and and let know about what was going on and, and I think the big thing is is you know, I think there's two different types of friendship in baseball. You got your baseball friends and then you got your lifer friends that, and I've been fortunate to have a lot of those lifer friends that I've met through, through, uh, through the Cubs organization. So um, a lot of positives. Uh, I mean, really all positives over there. Um, I'm glad I got to be a part of another historic franchise and make history. And, and, you know, that's something that, that uh, nobody could really ever take away from us. And I mean, they're clearly, transitioning now from your communications with them and your observations do you have a sense of what they're doing this offseason uh I don't I mean I, I think we all kind of see what's going on I think that's the big thing is you see kind of where they're headed um but that doesn't mean they're going to be bad you know Chicago Cubs are still going to be a good team a good organization um but yeah I mean all of our conversations were great and, and, you know, I, there was not a negative conversation in there. I think, you know, you kind of reach a point where sometimes you just, you, you need to move on. And, and I think that's where we were at on both sides. And like I told Jed, I'm a grown man and, and he understood that. And, and, and we could walk away with both of our heads held high and, and move on. And I think that's, uh, I think we're in a good place with that. I think we have a good understanding with that. And, there's no hard feelings. I hope no hard feelings from them on, on, on their end on what's going on. So, um, but no, I mean, I think, I think nothing but positives and, and very grateful. And I told Tom this uh, on the phone when I spoke to him, I said, I'm very grateful for them um, taking the chance on me, uh, you know, six years ago and, and, and offering me that deal and, and believing in, in what, uh, what I bring to the table. 
And we'll finish up with Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, you seem like a guy who, wherever you've been, you've always tried to really establish a, a connection with the community. Um, obviously, you had a long time to do that in Boston and a long time in Chicago. Is that something you think you can do on a short term deal in DC? And, and you know, I, I don't have to ask you to get in specifics, but what kind of things would interest you in um, trying to make some kind of connection quickly with, with Washington? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, that's probably one of the easiest things you can do in a community. I think you look at a place like D.C. with with all the hospitals and technology and everything that's there. I mean, the world's at your fingertips. Um, obviously, for me, my, my personal I don't want to say agenda, but something that we are very passionate about is pediatric cancer research. So I'm sure there's something. Uh, in DC that we can get involved with. Uh, I know in Chicago, we've done other things. We've done, um, you know, kind of some shopping sprees. We've done some uh, donations. Otherwise, uh, I love to get, I love to get involved with other guys' foundations. You know, I don't know what that situation is here and as far as my teammates, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a million different ways. Uh, I think once we kind of get going and, and we kind of figure out where we're at as a community with this, this COVID stuff and kind of figure out what we can and can't do. Um, it's definitely something that we'll dive into and, and try to make an impact.